The biggest secret of our world is that we aren't as smart as we think we are. And I'm not talking about just understanding, oh yeah, um, I know plenty of people who think they're real smart, but they're not. They're getting everything wrong. You motherfucker. There's this thing called the Dunning-Kruger effect. We overestimate our competence in and comprehension of things. Dunning implores us to look for examples of the effect in ourselves. The first rule of the Dunning-Kruger club is you don't know you're a member of the Dunning-Kruger club. Bro, bro. I fuck it. I sent this article to somebody who was working on it. Sent her this article and she says, Oh man, I know some people I have to send that to. I know some people who are definitely in that group. Oh, I don't know why I already started it. Did I already start it? Yeah. Uh, oh, this is flattering. Hi. Hold on. God, I want to lose this weight, but then I'm also like, no, I get too distracted. Handsome Ares gets so distracted by the by the beautiful women, so... So no, we gotta stay like this for a little while longer. Anyway, um, so I got some feedback from my mother yesterday to the video that I posted yesterday, which in it, I tell you that you're stupid. Um, my mother, God bless her soul. She, I shouldn't be alienating her because she is literally one of three people who watch my videos, including me. And that was actually her feedback, that I shouldn't be alienating people, that I shouldn't be telling you all that you're stupid, you know. That there are certainly some people who are stupid, but that I shouldn't be um, putting you off and, and, you know, insulting you. The thing is, it fucking is you! You, that's the point! Everybody's rational except for everybody else. That's the way that we look at things, right? You're rational, but nobody else is. Your religion is true, but nobody else is. I don't even know what you think that they are doing with their religion. I mean, I mean, so, so, so you believe on faith and on your personal experiences. Maybe you've had some experiences that are just, oh, I just know there's a God. And what have experience that these other people had? They've just not been chosen to have these experiences? But they keep saying that they've had these experiences, but you're the only one who's had true experiences? What? Bro, nobody needs to be told that other people are stupid. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to tell you that you and I are stupid. Even in editing my video yesterday, I saw like different mistakes that I made, different awkward things that I said that aren't, aren't really true. In fact, it was kind of fallacious at the end of my first video. Um, I, I made a mockery in order to make a point. But you could also have made a mockery of my point in order to make the point that I was wrong. So I do it too. It's why I started my full of shit series, excuse me, which is where I tell you about a moment where I changed my mind, where I realized I was wrong about something. Because who takes pictures of birthday cards? <clears throat> I haven't kept that up, um, but I will get back to it and it'll be a movement. Imagine a world where people were proud. Oh God, we're so fucking backwards. Where people were proud to be able to say, look, I learned. I really believe that this was true, realized it wasn't, found out it wasn't, and now I believe that this is true. There was a, there's an Adam uh, Ruins Everything episode where he corrects past mistakes, and the whole bit is that somebody's going, wait, why would you, uh, you know, want to do this episode? That's the majority voice. People are like, you know, people see correction and learning as bad. Or or maybe consciously we're able to say, oh yeah, no, it's great. But then actually in the moment we don't like to be corrected. Anyway, so, so my mother says, and I love you. My mother says, um, and I'm actually speaking to my mother. <laughs> Nobody else is watching this video. The only other, okay, hold on, I'll get to that. So um, literally, wow. So my mother says, you know, you don't want to alienate people, you know. Talk about how other people are stupid. But again, the point is, is that everybody's stupid except for ourselves. Everybody's rational except for other people. I mean, that's the point of the Dunning-Kruger thing that I talk about in the second video. It's that we are all in the club. I have... I have an untrustworthy unconscious. There are things that seem plainly true to me. But luckily, 
no matter how plainly true they seem, I'm open to being wrong. Intellectual humility, right? So the other piece of my mom's feedback was that I'm making it seem like there's no hope that there's no solution. Look, the solution isn't pick up a problem solving book. The solution isn't a certain method of going step by step, problem solving, whatever. The solution is intellectual humility. The solution is honestly realizing that there's a problem. If you just realize that you, as amazing as you are, are worthy of doubt, no, hold on, let me rephrase that. That you, as amazing as you are, even you can be wrong. Or that you are so amazing that you deserve to doubt yourself. That you deserve doubt. Something in there was good. The problem is pretty much solved. Now you're open to the possibility of being wrong. Now, when you discuss things, you're not justifying your opinion. You're not defending your belief. You're explaining your belief so that the other person can show you where you might be wrong or so you can show them where they might be wrong because you want to know the truth because you don't think that you already have the truth. But we've got this huge blind spot to our own blind spots. We are completely, it is amazing. It is amazing that someone could watch those videos and then their takeaway, I love you, mom, could be, gosh, you're really coming down on the viewer. Maybe you should just remind them that other people are stupid. That's literally the antithesis, the, ah, fuck. Okay. By the way, my other two viewers, <laughs> fuck everybody. My other two viewers, one is devoutly religious. She nods her head. She really does, in a way, understand what I say. And she agrees with a lot of it. But it's like, that's amazing. That's so interesting. And I think that I'm learning so much from you, but I'm still going to choose my beliefs because they're justified. They're um, sort of supported by my own individual experience. Fuck the experiences of all the Christians. Fuck the experiences of all the Jews. I mean, not really, because Muslim Islam is supposed to be sort of the, the latest religion. So, it's not, but, but fuck their adamants. Fuck their adherence to those outdated prophets. I know that my thing is right. I can't demonstrate it. I can't logically sort of deduce in any way. And I totally get what you're saying that logic and information should be respected. I'm totally on board with that. But personally, I'm just not going to do any of that. And I'm going to continue to believe that I am right. That's my second viewer. And honestly, I really do love her. And one day she's going to come around. My third viewer is sure about everything. Everything. Having a conversation with this woman is, well, that's not entirely true. Because I'll say something. Um, she'll go, no, no, that's not true. But if I give the evidence, eventually she'll, but you wouldn't think that there'd be any point in giving the evidence. Because she's like, no, no, no. I love all three of you. But it's you! <laughs> that's the point. That's the big secret. My dad's a great example. My dad's very dogmatic. Okay? He, he is a, what I call a religious atheist, right? There are two kinds of atheists, and we won't get into that in this video. But basically, there's those who believe there is no God, and then there's those who don't believe that there is a God, right? The only intellectually justified position is that you don't believe that there is a God. I have no reason to believe there's a God. I don't believe there's a God. But to take the, to assume the belief... That there is a God. To believe in an absence rather than just abstaining from belief. And that's not really justifiable. But this guy will tell you that all sorts of people are stupid. Oh, this idiot, that idiot. You know? But he'll use a lot of the same logical fallacies as the people that he complains about. Love you too, Dad. But that's how serious this problem is. And, and, and that's how oblivious we are to it, right? In 2015, I think, I read a book, The Invisible Gorilla, by Daniel Chabris and Simon... No, it's Christopher something. I can't read it from here. Christopher si Simon? Christ I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, in this book, they're researching flashbulb memories, which is where you have a really vivid recollection of what was happening at the time of a certain monumental event. For instance, JFK assassination, uh, Lincoln assassination, Challenger crashing, something about O.J. Simpson, something about Michael Jackson, 9-11, um, right? Okay. 
And we assume, because we don't doubt ourselves, we assume that all the details of our memory are correct because they're so vivid, right? So the authors of this book, The Invisible Gorilla, um, it's been, no, it's been for the past few decades, at least, um, maybe the last, maybe last century. But anyway, at some point, researchers started saying, I wonder whether these super vivid memories, what if they're not all that accurate? Okay. So then what the scientists do is they're, they're familiar with this research and they go, yeah, but ours is accurate, right? So they compare stories about what happened on 9-11. And they find these, like, glaring errors and gaps. No, not gaps. Errors. Right? So it wasn't that they just forgot something. No. It was that they remembered something that didn't even happen. And so they report about this in their book. So I'm dating a girl at the time. I don't love her. So it's about four years ago. I'm dating this girl. And I say to her, I'm telling her about this because maybe she, she was talking about something. And I'm sharing what wisdom I have uh, accumulated about, um, about this sort of our own fall, uh, fallibility. Ray, I've just, I've, I, I, I want to share with you what I read in my book, The Invisible Gorilla. These scientists, they were confident in their memories, despite knowing the fact that flashbulb memories aren't necessarily accurate. And then they checked and find out that their flashbulb memories were wrong. Anyway, and, and then I tell her about this other study that was done where people had to, like, um, uh, recall the memory three times over the course of a couple of years. And, and they kept, the accuracy kept going down, but their confidence stayed the same. So I tell her that these flashbulb memories, it's kind of bullshit. Like, we don't actually remember in with such accurate detail that we do. It just feels really true. And it just seems really true. You know, it just feels really true. And, and, and often what we'll do is it, we'll remember it as it should have been. So typically, so 9-11, for instance, happened on a Tuesday. Typically on a Tuesday, um, the garbage man would wave hello at me. And so then I'll remember, you know, several years later, yeah, and I remember the garbage man waved hello, but there was something weird in his expression. Um, and then I, and I guess he had just heard on the radio in his truck. And then I go in and I turn on and I get a message from a friend where people text things. No, I get a call from a friend and blah, 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 blah. The towers had gone down. Sorry, I shouldn't have blah, blah, blah that. Um, God, people are so stupid. Anyway, but maybe that day he was actually sick. He didn't even come by, but normally he comes by. So your mind just filled that in. Okay. So I share all of this with Ray. The girl that I'm dating. And she says, Oh, that's so interesting. It's funny. I remember exactly where I was. And I was like, right. But you did get from what I just explained that um, those memories might not be accurate. And she's like, oh, no, no, no. I know they are. Fuck! And she tells me the story of what happened. And it just happens to be a memory centered on her. So that's another thing that we do. We, when we, with our memories, what we'll do is we'll not only use details of how things normally would happen, but also we'll make it more centered around us. So they were doing a globe exercise in our class where the teacher would pass a globe, student would catch it, and he'd have to name a country. And it just happened to be that the moment the news broke, she was the one holding the globe. Maybe she was. The point is... Maybe she wasn't. And since we know that the mind is likely to make a memory about ourselves, even if it isn't, what are the chances that she was one of whatever 20 students that was holding the globe at the moment the news broke? So I'm like, all right, Ray, I got to get rid of you. It's just not clicking. So then I tell this story to my dad. I'm like, yeah, I got to I gotta dump this girl. Because, so I tell him about the research and about how the scientists thought they knew. But then their memories turned out to be incorrect. And how I told this story to the girl that I'm dating. So now she should doubt her memories. And she still insists. He goes, wow, I remember all the details surrounding what I found out, though. No, 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 I know. You have a vivid memory, but <laughs> why do you say, though? You're not... <laughs> You're not now telling me <laughs> that you too also believe that while all these other people can make mistakes, <laughs> you are the one with perfect memory.
memory? <laughs> Fuck! You are stupid and wrong. And yeah, maybe when I get to 13 subscribers, I'll realize, oh, I need to take another approach. But I don't see how there is any other approach. So I'm just going to keep shouting this. Um, it's certainly not what got me there, but I think I've always been, but this is hindsight. Look, here's me checking myself. I was about to say, I think I've always discussed myself. I don't really know. That could be hindsight bias. That could just be a general, just, you know, how we like to think good things things about ourselves and as real as it feels to me that I've always been skeptical of myself maybe I haven't in any case it wasn't that somebody yelled at me and told me I was stupid that made it click um but look this is the biggest secret of mankind and it's been it's been known for thousands of years by select people and, it, and let me reiterate we all know it about the other person it's amazing. Amazing. How incredible is that? That we are blind to our own blindness. There's actually a disorder called um, uh, confabulation. No, that's not what it's called at all. Confabulation is what you do if you have such a disorder. Um, but where you can be blind to your blindness. And you come up with these excuses. So basically what happens is your eyes are working fine. Your superior colliculus is working fine. But your occipital lobe, maybe it is not working. Or the connections to it are severed. So what happens is you receive the visual information. And it can trigger certain body actions, right? You can jump maybe if there's a bright sudden flash. But you won't actually be seeing any of this. You won't be processing this visual information. So what will happen is, um, I think it was Ramachandran, he talks about this, um, this uh, patient who was cortically blind, it's called, because the cortex is where you're blind, rather than it being an actual eye problem. And this guy kept, keeps walking into things. And, and the doctor's like, why are you walking into things? And the guy's like, oh, no, you just moved that. No, I can see fine. I know, it's hard to believe. And maybe I'm getting the details of the story wrong. Um, look up cortical blindness. I don't know how to tell you, man. Because you have to rethink everything. And it's not hopeless. It's just It just feels that way. But no, it, it, if you get to the point where you're like, I can be wrong about things. And never, ever will I say, I know this to be true and I will never change my mind. If you get to the point where you are never in a position where you, where you are never willing to refuse to change your mind, when you are never certain of anything, not your memories, not your perceptions, not your interpretations, not your deductions, then we can really talk. Then we can talk about how your whole concept of debate is wrong and stupid. Um, debate is stupid. We should be interested in getting the truth. We should be exchanging information. There should be no winning and losing. Justifying defending your beliefs is stupid. Your beliefs should not be defended. You should only have your beliefs because they stand up to scrutiny. You should not be protecting your ideas about the world. If someone says to you... By the way, you said that there were 5 million people in Paris? Actually, there are 2 million people, like, sort of in the city. And then there's like 12 million if you include the metropolitan area. No. Don't do that. It, it just depends on how you count. I, I tell you, I, you will not convince me. I will not change my mind about this. This is my belief and I have a right to believe it. It is my personal opinion. It is just what I believe. Now you may think, oh, okay, well, population, that's not the, you know, the, you can't have an opinion about population. Um, the only difference between population and healthcare is the, how complicated of an issue it is. And the goals involved. That is a big difference. But most people sort of want general, um, have a general similar sense of morality, like what feels good. We're not going to get into all that. But all that we can get into if we first just accept, I might be wrong. The next step after accepting I might be wrong is, so what do I do? If I can't trust my heart to know truth, which is the stupidest fucking
fucking thing in the world. You, how is, how, what? I mean, forget the fact that it pumps blood. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying anything in your body. How do you think that it, truth was just written onto you? Like, why do you, why do you believe that your body is some perfect detector of truth? And everybody else who also believes their body is a perfect detector of truth, well, they're wrong. Like, how do you, truth is not inside of you. Truth is outside. Truth needs to be discovered. It can't be chosen. It can't be felt. Okay. It needs to be discovered. And even when you are discovering it, you may be, your interpretation can be wrong. So, but truth remains outside of you. There's no way to internalize it. Um, I think I stand by that statement. It depends on sort of what it connotes. But the moment that the information gets to here, it's no longer capital T truth because you might have fucked with it somehow. You chewed it. You changed it. So then what do I do? I want to know truth. I accept that I don't know truth. I accept that I am not the ultimate judge of truth. So what do I do? Well, I have to look at the outside world, to look at information. I have to be flexible in my interpretations, you know, once new information arises or a better interpretation comes, you know. Okay, so then I don't have any reason to believe in fairies or gods or dragons. I want to, though, and I feel that presence. What is that about? Again, I can't trust my feelings, so... Okay, so it's possible that I'm feeling a god, or, oh wait, neuroscience has already fucking explained all those feelings, pretty much? Oh, well, I'm not going to ignore that information. I still, maybe there's a god, and maybe god programmed, but it's just not worth it anymore. There's just nothing to support it. I'm not mad if someone makes it their life journey to discover god. You hear the word journey, discover. I'm mad if someone who stands still and says, I know there's a god. I know anything. We can talk about how proof is bullshit. The moment someone uses the P word around me, I stop taking them seriously as a critical thinker. Or maybe at least I just know that they aren't very knowledgeable about, or they haven't really fully fleshed out what critical thinking is. What is proof? Proof is when you show that something is true. You can't show that something is true. You can just show more and more how true something is seems to be based on the information. But just because it seems doesn't mean that it is. You can't prove anything. There's never gonna be, and I say this with 99% confidence, going to be enough information to say that we will never have future contradicting, contradicting information. What an ignorant, arrogant fucking thing proof is. What year is it, 2019? How long have we been seriously interested in studying the world, about 500 years? How long have we had the machinery to really, really be able to do it? Let's say the last 60 years. Do you think you can prove shit? Now, nobody who has this machinery thinks that, I hope. But you in the, in the public, you want things to be easy because that's, again, another thing you need to accept about your unconscious. It, it wants things to be black and white. This is, this isn't. This is good. This is bad. It saves on a lot of cognitive energy. But we can talk about all of that once you first accept that you're a fucking idiot. You. You. And if you can't get on board with that, if that alienates you, this just isn't your time yet. I'm going to get other people on the movement. Understanding the fallacies, the biases, using them in regular conversation. And then... One day, it'll trickle down to you. Like how we've kind of started to figure out, we've kind of closed the gaps that God used to fill. And that's trickling down to, well, more than half the population. But the people who are, they've got it. So maybe I'll just get them on board first. Actually, maybe that's what I need to be focusing on. No, 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 no. Fuck that. No, 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 because any, yeah, no, no, because anybody who already kind of has a general gist that we are fallible, or at least is open-minded, anybody who has that, they understand. I'm no, I am talking to you because even I make mistakes. I sometimes forget my own fallibility, or I don't catch myself before I make a sort of an intellectual error driven by my unconscious. 
What stupid advice to tell you that other people are stupid? You know that. Anytime you've ever had an opinion about something, you know there's some other asshole who thinks the opposite. And he must be stupid, right? Because you know the truth. You know others are stupid. I want you to know that you're stupid. I want you to... Well, no, I don't want you to know that I'm stupid. <laughs> but I need to know that I'm stupid. <laughs> it's you, bro. Like... I need to let this out. For anybody who watches my videos and thinks, oh, that's so important what he's saying about how other people are stupid and, and about the mistakes that we make and all those other people who are in the Dunning-Kruger club, I just want to say it's you. But no, I don't check my messages. I don't get an alert about it. I don't find out about it. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe for more.